Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy Jack here at the Irish Hotspur, and this is going to be servicing as kind of a Jed Spence loan update, if you will, but it's also going to be maybe servicing as a way to speculate further as to maybe why Jed Spence hasn't been able to really get much playing time for Spurs in the first place, why Antonio Conte might have been reluctant to play him because everybody, Jed Spence, is sort of struggling at the moment, you know, at Ren. He's not doing very well defensively. He's getting caught out for maybe some certain sort of frailties in his game, if you will but definitely is not getting the best sort of remarks or the best sort of attention from French media or even from French, you know, Stad Rene fans at this moment in time, everybody. So this is going to serve as a bit of a loan update for you on Jed Spence, but it's also going to serve as a, a bit of an answer, a bit of added context for maybe why Antonio Conte was so reluctant to play Jed Spence in the first place. And maybe you could go further, if you will, as to maybe was Antonio Conte right about maybe not playing Jed Spence all along. But let's kind of go through some of the games where he has featured and where he has been not given, let's say, the best of reviews or the best of ratings or the best of remarks from the likes of the media as well as people who've watched the game in general. And one of the games where you definitely probably were able to see him or where you probably might have heard where he struggled was in that 2-1 defeat to the likes of Shakhtar Donetsk away from home. And he was given a match rating of three in this game, everybody, by the French outlet Maxi Foot. And I was able to translate their match rating here. And they said that the English right side defender was catastrophic at fault for the first goal. He left his lane abandoned on the action leading to the second Ukraine goal as well offensively he did nothing so they're basically saying he played at fault for basically the first goal as well as the second goal and I completely agree I'll break it down for you here everybody in the 10th minute there was a very poor error where he basically let this sort of bouncing ball that was sort of maybe intended for this runner in behind that he actually had no idea about or really was completely unaware of basically the Shakhtar player sort of hits this maybe bouncing you know ball that's really meant for someone going in behind Jed Spence is already sort of preoccupied with another defender, lets that ball sort of bounce in behind him, seems to be sort of, you know, happy with that, kind of turns around a bit slowly, thinking maybe the goalkeeper is going to pick it up, or basically there's just no one in there, you know, behind him at all. Turns out there is. He has to recover, sprint back to catch up with the player. It's basically too late at this point. He fires a shot at Mandanda, who is able to save it, but it parries it on to, I think, another oncoming Shakhtar player who's able to put it away for them to go 1-0 up. So for this sort of kind of attempted a ball over the top, he's definitely caught out for it where he's not able to deal with it properly, but also is just completely unaware in the first place of this other, you know, uh, Shakhtar player making a run beyond him, which is basically, I think, sort of makes the goal possible in the first place is the fact that he's just not aware of this runner at all. In the 37th minute, too, this is just a little detail I noticed. He actually had a player trapped in the corner where he definitely was probably, you know, easily capable of winning it or, you know, maybe sending it out of play. But somehow the Shakhtar player gets let out by Jet Spence through maybe a bit of trickery and sort of invention of his own, but also just maybe poor defending, really, from Jet Spence. And if you maybe look at someone like Emerson, he probably would have done a lot better there. I would say maybe a guy like Emerson. And then for the basically the second goal for Shakhtar, this comes in the 44th minute. It's another ball over the top, basically, that ends up, you know, catching Spence out. The player is able actually to bring it down the Shakhtar player that, uh, you know, hits that gets the ball over the top down Jed Spence's side. Uh, he brings it down out of the sky, you know, first time, but starts to maybe cut inside. Jed Spence does quite well, actually, trying to sort of, you know, cheat and maybe try to, uh, you know, maybe, you know, not allow him to cut inside. But I would say actually maybe cheats or maybe cuts a little bit too much, you know, to the side and then actually allows this uh, oncoming fullback for Shakhtar to make this overlap, you know, and makes the overlap pass even more dangerous where by Jed Spence sort of cheating more to one side to try to prevent this guy cutting inside, he makes this pass for this overlap even easier for the Shakhtar player. The oncoming fullback or the overlapping fullback carries it into the box uh, down Jed Spence's side. Jed Spence tries to catch up with him, just isn't able really to do it. The fullback then is able to slide it across, you know, the six to an oncoming Shakhtar player, basically gets taken down for a penalty, and they go 2-0 up, everybody. And then again in the 64th minute, this isn't a goal, but this is basically a really good ball in from a corner, and Stepanenko, one of the Shakhtar players, basically rises above Spence in the middle of the box before Spence, I think, even jumps in the first place and gets a free header, and it looks like a big missed chance, especially the way Stepanenko sort of reacts to it. You can tell that he maybe thought that he should have done a lot better, so that could have been a moment where they could have gone three goals up, 
Uh, and he actually would have then been at fault for three goals in that scenario, Jed Spence. But he did find himself only 2-1 down, and he was still on the pitch at the end of the game. And this is basically the last kick of the game, one of the last opportunities of the game. He gets this little layoff with a lot of time and space kind of on the outside of the area, and he tries to go for a first-time cross, basically, I think intended for a player at the back post, and he completely fluffs it, everybody. Just completely messes it up, sends it into the stands, this like looping, terrible cross into the stands. It really was absolutely dreadful. And it was one of the last kicks of the game. And it was their last chance really to get an equalizer and maybe carry a better, you know, sort of result back to France. And he completely messes it up with an overhit ball out of play. So not a good performance from uh, from Jed there. And he was actually described again as a catastrophic performance um, in that one. His first start of the season, though, did come against the likes of Lille. And this one was a bit of a mixed bag, I would say. You know, he looked pretty positive in the first half. He created an amazing chance from all these little step overs and uh, just kind of, you know, taking on his man one on one like we used to see him do at Forest. And then he like plays this beautiful ball across the six for, you know, any player to come on to. But felt like, you know, just the the Ren players weren't ready for it. None of them really made clean contact, but that's not his ball. He really did create a good chance for them. And then he also made a very good block, actually, to prevent a goal as well, you know, for, for the likes of Lille. So pretty solid first half, you could say. Uh, but then in the second half, uh, he does get maybe caught out from making, you know, maybe too far of a, a run going forward, where Joe Rodon, who I would say has not helped him out much defensively uh, thus far, who's also really playing quite poor, if I may add, uh, plays this kind of looped ball over the top. It doesn't really end up working out, and they get counterattacked down that right-hand side, down Spence's side and Joe Rodon's side, and basically it leads to kind of a Lille counterattack and a Lille goal. And I wouldn't really say Spence plays you know much fault in it, but this is, again, something that happens that actually ends up happening later you know, in this uh, match against Toulouse, where it seems like Jed Spence really does like to make those runs going forward. He likes to you know have some you know, uh, impact on the game, you know, uh, in the attacking sense, but is also kind of caught out for it where maybe he gets caught out a bit too far forward. And then even with his pace and everything, isn't really able to recover actually as well. And a good example of that would be in his, uh, three, one defeat to Toulouse, but just to maybe add a bit of context, that's not even my own, you know, not, not even my own, uh, summation. This is actually the Euro expert when talking about that three, one defeat to the likes of, um, to Lille, Matt Hayes, pick yourself up, Matty boy. He was able, he asked, you know, a uh, Euro expert about uh, Jed Spence's uh, first start of the season against the likes of Lille. And he said, to be honest, I think he showed why Conte has been apprehensive about playing him uh, was, and he was positive and impactful going forward, but sleepy defensively, a lack of awareness that got exposed. And this seems to kind of fall in line with why maybe Antonio Conte was so reluctant to play Jed Spence in the first place is because he does seem to be a bit sleepy defensively. He does seem to kind of get caught out and also doesn't really need, you know, it doesn't lack or it seems to lack some of the fundamentals defensively that a good maybe fullback might have. He does seem to be just a bit more sound going forward than he is defensively. And uh, the second start of the season for him came against Toulouse. This is away from home. And you, if you were to really pick out any of the goals where he does quite poorly, it's definitely the first goal where it's kind of a counterattack down Toulouse's, uh, you know, right-hand side, not his side, but down their right-hand side. And uh, the striker basically gets a bit of a chance, you know, in front of Mandanda. Mandanda sort of, you know, saves it sort of where it kind of just goes through his hand, through his right hand, and uh, starts to kind of, you know, trickle, you know, towards your, you know, starts to bounce, you know, towards goal and uh, Judd Spence kind of like follows the ball like towards the goal and he actually watches it kind of bounce off the post and seems to be like a little slow to react the whole time just kind of seems to let it bounce off the post and then after it bounces off the post this Toulouse winger basically makes a run beyond him and taps him up and taps it home so while you would say maybe he doesn't play total fault for this goal you would say definitely he could have done a whole lot better because this guy really should not be getting a tap in in that sort of way because actually Jed Spence was there first he just seemed a little slow to react and just a little slow to maybe be proactive in his defending and his clearance of this situation the second goal for Toulouse I don't feel like there's a whole lot he can do so I'm not really gonna uh, really make much about it apart from the fact that happened 10 seconds after they had conceded the first goal and then the third goal is really just another bad giveaway by this Ren team and it really all that it points out though is that you know the Toulouse players had like I think two or three players running down Jet Spence's side because Jet Spence is kind of caught out going forward they all run down his side and one of them eventually scores but it's not really exactly his fault again it's a really bad giveaway but what I would say though is that they do kind of catch him out sometimes for maybe let's say being a bit too far forward you know at times and his most recent match actually came against Claremont Fu. And again, though, Jets Pence did not really get high remarks, really high praise. 
He was caught out with another ball over his head, actually, to a runner he was unaware of in this game. And it actually should have led to a Claremont Fu goal where basically it's kind of like uh, they're in midfield in the final third and Jed Spence is kind of at the edge of his own area. And there's this kind of clip ball over the top that he's completely unaware of, you know, this runner that's making a run behind him and kind of just lets him past. And the, the player basically has a free header or a free chance basically in front of the keeper and completely flops it. But you would definitely say should have been a goal and completely Jed Spence's, you know, kind of lack of awareness for what's going on behind him. And then also in the second goal, though, that Ren actually do score because they win this game 2-0. He plays a massive part in this going forward, actually, where he kind of you know takes up a position in field, receives it on the half turn, makes a really lovely driving run through the final third, then plays his striker Toko Akambi in behind. From there, Toko Akambi is able to you know put a shot on goal, gets deflected, and then the other striker, Kali Moendo, goes in for a tap in. So he plays a big part in you know the second goal going in. But he actually, again, though, did not really get sort of the highest of remarks in this game. Because when, you know, uh, I think it was Stad Rene online, sort of like a, a fan publication for Stad Rene, gave him a match rating of three after that Claremont food game, despite winning 2-0. And they said on Sunday, he kept his pace and played the entire 90 minutes as Ren beat Claremont 2-0, his first one of the season. But Spence was still criticized, earning a rating of three out of 10. Stad Rene Sport Online said that the negative point of this victory is the defensive frailty of Spence. He completely failed with his marking. Offensively, he was more visible. His ball helping Ren make it 2 nil. Technical errors, though, and positionally at shambles for the rest of the match. And that is, again, though, kind of consistent with what we're talking about. He's consistent. You know, he's positionally not very great. He does seem to also maybe struggle with balls over the top. And it's just not really all that great of a defender, I would say. It does seem to maybe lack some of that, you know, fundamentals, you know, that might come with being, a, you know, a good fullback or a good defender. And it does show that maybe when you, we are kind of maybe confused or a bit in, frustrated with Antonio Conte for maybe why he never played him, we are getting kind of some answers now as to maybe why Antonio Conte was reluctant to play Jed Spence in the first place. And I think part of the reason may be is because Jed Spence does seem to be a bit of a liability defensively. He gets really caught out with balls over the top, sometimes makes runs a bit too far forward, where then uh, people are able to kind of take advantage of that and counterattack down his side. He's also not even really been all that impactful going forward for the likes of Ren thus far. Like he hasn't been you know, let's say terrific. So he's not making up for maybe being a bit of a defensive liability with how good he is going forward. It's just been kind of a bit of a struggle for Jed Spence thus far, everybody. So if you do want to maybe use this video as any sort of kind of lesson, it maybe is sort of kind of a, a way to sort of explain, you know, maybe why Antonio Conte has been reluctant to play Jed Spence in the first place. And that simply is because he does look to be a bit of, you know, a liability defensively, and he seems to have some defensive frailties. But everybody, that's sort of my explanation on this whole Jet Spence situation, and maybe also a bit of an update on how he's doing over at Stad Rene. He actually plays tonight against the likes of Shakhtar Donetsk in their second leg. So if you do want to, you know, maybe get some, you know, sort of, you know, insight yourself on maybe how he's playing, you're welcome to watch that game later. Also, he's going to continue, I imagine, to play for Ren this season, but thus far has not been playing very well. But let's smash that like button, please, everybody. Let's also continue to cheer on our jet and hopefully he does turn it around let's try to get this to 75 likes if we can if you agree disagree whatever you may lie on this sort of jet spent situation get your comments down below and let me know what your thoughts are on him and maybe why antonio conte was so reluctant to play him but everybody hit that like button on the way out everybody but i will be seeing you come on you spurs and in conte i trust Everywhere we go.